Hey guys, welcome to Black and Fight Academy. Today, I've got an interesting question for us to discuss. It's kind of like taboo in the jiu-jitsu world. Um, people are very divided on both extremes of this spectrum, so I wanted to hear your thoughts, and I was going to give mine on heel hooks. Mm. Should they be allowed? How big of you know your game should they be? And even just beyond heel hooks, a lot of leg locks in general. Um, so what are your thoughts? On heel hooks, uh, just First in legality. Yeah, in legality, I think that they should be legal in every form of tournament. If we want to say, at, like, after white belt, I get that, maybe, but, like, I think they have to have a presence in every single format. And the reason is because if you're not doing that, then you're leaving just huge gaps in your game. And I think that, that there's repercussions for doing that. Oh, I agree. Yeah. And, and that's what I was going to say is there's so many people we that... agreement on that? We are. Oh, okay, absolutely. cool. All right, okay. Um, I mean, I love working leg locks and things like that. I do see yeah. the complication with people who are brand new trying to rip people's heels. I think that's exactly why it's important to educate people. Yeah, I think so. Um, because you will have that happen. I mean, you see people going into tournaments sometimes, a blue belt going against the black belt, and the blue belt puts on a heel hook, and the black belt spins out as hard as he can and rips his knee. Yeah. That's not something that that's, should be happening. That's kind of the other thing there is, is... It, it, at some point in the experience of grappling, whatever form, whatever art and style, uh, it becomes counterintuitive, like taking those out to protect someone, because if they have no idea what to do when they're caught, look, a lot of times it's the person caught in the submission that hurts themselves, that hurts themselves, yeah. rolling the wrong way and exploding their knee, not tapping because they don't realize it's on. There's another thing about heel hooks is uh, comfort being around them is important because they don't really, it's kind of one of those submissions that doesn't hurt a whole lot until it, it, the damage is already done. Yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely one where I think, I think you've got to be around them, you've got to see it. Uh, as far as what you know, place it needs to hold in your game, that depends on you. But you need to know enough, at least, the bare minimum is you need to know enough to navigate your way out of those positions. If yeah. you don't know that, then you don't, you're not going to be able to, to implement any of your own. Yeah. When I, and I've talked to too many people who, you know, are on the opposite side of the spectrum and say like, oh, leg locks don't work or, yeah, you yeah. know, or, oh, you know, all they know is leg locks, you know, whichever, whoever they're speaking in tournaments. And it's like, it sounds, I mean, he beats you in tournament. It sounds yeah. like you should learn leg locks. Yeah. You know, I don't think that's a cop-out excuse. I think you see leg locks very heavily in kind of the lower to like medium high levels of jujitsu mm -hmm. um, because not many people train them as much as they need to. And I'm going to take whatever route I can to victory. If I need to use a heel hook and he, if he hands it to me, he doesn't know how to defend it. Sure. Of course I'm going to do that. Yeah, of course. Um, I'm going to exploit that weakness. Yeah. Um, however, on the flip side, if that's all you know, you're going to run into a huge roadblock once you get to the upper echelon of jujitsu. The guys like, you know, Gordon Ryan, Craig Jones, all of them, they land a lot of leg locks, but they yeah. land a lot of everything. Yeah. Um, so if that's all you know, you're going to get to a fairly high level of jiu-jitsu, but you're going to hit a wall when everyone in that in that upper tier knows them just knows as well as you, you but you neglected the other half of your jiu-jitsu. Exactly. Um, yeah, that I think you can't go either way. Both where ways, it's, yeah. well, they just caught me in a heel hook, and of course that's just a dirty move. Or, well, I lost because they passed my guard, and I just wasn't able to get my game going. Well, <laughs> that's too bad is they didn't they didn't fight you there yeah. so yeah it goes both ways you got to be well rounded you got to accept that the other person might be whatever yeah so. I think it's an amazing addition to the sport um, I think it's a very realistic addition to the sport it's a very safe position too if someone you know were to attack you you're not taking many punches from that position um, sometimes sometimes however yeah. if you're putting them on their butt you know how to control posture um, you know control balance and things like that. It's one of those where, and I will, okay, I will say, if you blow someone's knee out and they're on some stuff, maybe they'll still come out and come swinging. True, again. true. Uh, but it's a, a huge addition to your jiu-jitsu game. If you're not training them, I encourage you to. If that's all you're training, I encourage you to open up a broader spectrum spectrum of jiu-jitsu. I think it's just a part of what makes your game complete. Yeah. I think I think we're going to start seeing these entries in MMA more as well. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily for the submissions themselves. I think you're going to see a lot, though, of leg entanglements being used to sweep. Part of the reason is it gives you the option of always coming up on top. Um, what we sometimes see is people who only know how to use those positions for the finish getting knocked out because you apply both legs and both arms to something, and the other guy, if he still has gotten heavy on that foot before you were able to apply it, you see people get 
just their face punched in, but I think more and more we're going to see people entangle the legs, immediately sweep, and then decide what they're going to do. Can I keep him far enough, or do I want to keep a hold of his heel and stand to be over the guy and maybe implement my own ground and pound, maybe re-entry into the leg? So I, I think that that's going to be another evolution. Well, and to add to that, too, I use them all the time to pass. Yeah. All yeah. the time. If, if I'm having trouble getting past someone's guard, and I threaten that foot, and he immediately panics and kicks the foot, mm -hmm. he gives me an easy leg drag straight through. Yeah. Um, so I use them to pass too. I think whether or not you're going for the finish, just being able to threaten them or defend them leaves you a lot of options and kind of completes your game. So right. We're on the um, same page on that. I agree. That's shocking. I think there's a lot of people on both sides. I think either way it's kind of dumb. Just yeah. learn them. It's part jujitsu. Yeah. Um, it's a really cool part of jiu-jitsu. There's a lot, honestly, there's so much detail in those moves that are really fun to learn. I've enjoyed learning more because yeah. uh, I know we've been kind of going through that journey together. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's our answer to, and our opinion of heel hooks. Should they be legal? Thanks leg locks? Helping set us, set us off on the, uh, defensive, uh, stuff, Chase. <laughs> uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So shout out to Chase Hanna. That man's yeah, yeah. an animal. Lab, so. Oh yeah.